When you learn how to use LinkedIn as a marketing tool, you too can take the market by force, just like a hurricane. Stay until the end of this video, and I'm gonna share where I started as a behind the scenes, fairly unknown brand, and how I leveraged LinkedIn to become a LinkedIn top 15 sales influencer. to kind of kick things off as we talk about using LinkedIn as a marketing tool. Do you want to talk about the LinkedIn profile and where that fits into the scheme of things? Yeah, so um, it's actually amazing how LinkedIn has changed yeah. its whole dynamic setup, right? So it yeah. used to be that LinkedIn was all about your resume, so to speak, right? right? So you <laughs> yes. show up and you talk about what you do and how you do it and how you're the greatest in the universe <laughs> and all of these things. And now it is literally a personal branding um, space for you. Yeah. And your company can actually be branded as well. So I always, whenever I look at a LinkedIn profile and I see that LinkedIn standard banner, Ooh. I'm like, that is primary real estate for you to be <laughs> that marketing. That cover banner with that blue default background. No, don't do it. Reconsider. Exactly. That's a perfect, that's perfect real estate for you to actually you, if if the only thing you do is change it to your corporate banner, yeah. that would at least be a start. Right, right. <laughs> Ideally, you want that banner to be used as real estate to direct your buyer and or potential relationship to where you want them to go. Mm -hmm. And so there are other things that you can do as well. Of course, you know, your profile picture mm -hmm. should be professional. Um, and again, this is all branding. And then to go into your headline as well as the about section. Mm -hmm. So that's typically, um, I've heard you say it so many times, above the fold. Right. That's typically the first thing people look at. It's, you know, yes. a seven to eight second view. Yes. That's about all you have. Right. <laughs> and so that needs to be compelling and it needs to be image driven and have the right language in it from a branding perspective to get, you know, to get people to go to the next line. Yes. Like, like the focus of them reading the first line is to get them to read the second line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so take it slow, be strategic and understand that you have everything that you need to brand personally and as a business. I love it. That's so critical. And I'm glad that you started with the LinkedIn profile because most people don't realize that LinkedIn is one of the top five indexing sites with Google, mm -hmm. which means that when you search something or more importantly, when your buyer searching who the ideal service provider is that they want to work with, if they're searching speaker, you know, uh, leadership consultant or things of that nature, oftentimes LinkedIn profiles are showing up. Or, you know, I even think about the fact that, you know, I've had situations where women will refer me to other women entrepreneurs. And so they'll say, oh, I Googled you. And because my LinkedIn profile is one of the top results that shows up when you Google my name, which by the way, I challenge you to Google your own name. Not now, they'll finish my video. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when you Google your own name, you realize that oftentimes it, your LinkedIn profile shows up in the top results. Mm. And so if someone does go to your LinkedIn profile and they haven't done the things that, you know, you haven't optimized your profile the way that you just described, Cheryl, it's like so, are you going to get the opportunity based off of what they see? Or is your LinkedIn profile still reading like a resume and yeah. thus it's negating opportunities from you? So Definitely. I think that's a, that's a huge critical point. We know that the majority of executive buyers turn to LinkedIn to make purchasing decisions. So that profile is just critical. Um, so I know, okay, so your LinkedIn profile is a big part. That's where people land. Kelly, do you want to talk about other ways that your LinkedIn LinkedIn period can be used as a marketing tool. Yes, absolutely. I definitely know that aside from your profile, it's really important to post and publish engaging content. Mm. And so I know that you always tell us to, you challenge us to think about LinkedIn, exec, the executives that are on LinkedIn as regular people. They, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they want to have fresh ideas. They want to read engaging content that they've never you know, heard about before. And um, if you post that engaging content on a consistent basis and position yourself as a thought leader in the marketplace and in your industry, not only can you connect with other peers, but you can connect with your executive buyer. Agreed. It's, I have a lot of people who come to me and say, you know, wow, how did you position yourself on LinkedIn? How have you been recognized, you know, for these distinctions on LinkedIn? And as much as I would love to act like I'm super special, the thing about it is only 1% of LinkedIn users consistently publish on the platform daily. 
So there's a small percentage of people who are properly leveraging the platform, mm -hmm. which is crazy because I've been teaching LinkedIn strategies for like four or five years and there's still not a, people will set up a profile, they'll go on now and then, but those people who are disciplined about continually adding value on the platform mm -hmm. are far and few between. So that means there's a massive opportunity. Um, to your point about content, LinkedIn just created their LinkedIn Creator Accelerator program, which is super exciting because in the big money movement, I was one of the first people to find out about that program and I shared it with our members and one of our members, Claudia, was accepted. And so, oh, nice. you know, it was a $10,000 plus opportunity. So LinkedIn provided resources and, um, and funds and a stipend and contributed to the creativity. And it's been amazing how she went from someone who was fairly unknown to the platform to having that partnership with LinkedIn and just like the amazing content. She's doing podcasts, she's doing video blogging and she's doing Car surveys. Chronicles. Yeah. <laughs> Car Chronicles. And it's amazing yeah. to see how that consistency, her visibility on the platform is literally changing the way that the market perceives her, mm -hmm. right? And so um, I love that you talk about that with content. And, and when you're thinking of insights, I, I think especially when we talk about marketing, it goes back to marketing 101. Like, what is your buyer's journey? What are they looking for? You know, when they are considering a service provider, when they're just becoming aware of the problem that they have, what type of content are they looking for? And then making sure that you're publishing it consistently. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll say this too. Um, one of, I think, the hurdles that a lot of the women entrepreneurs that we work with face is imposter syndrome. And for whatever reason, when we say LinkedIn, people immediately think stuffy. I think it's because it was a resume yes. site. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, and, and they perceive it to be stuffy and it's so crazy because we have clients who, when we look at their Instagram, we're like, oh my gosh, yes, you're fun, you're larger than life, like you are such a dope human being. Yes. And then when it comes to LinkedIn, they're like, Right. But no. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> And or they or they have so much intimidation that they don't post consistently because they're like, well, I can't be myself. Mm -hmm. Do y'all want to talk about like authenticity on the platform? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So when I think of that, um, we have another member that comes to mind, Jenna. Mm -hmm. And I can remember when she was first starting, she was getting a lot of traction from just adding polarizing thoughts, right? right. So she literally was, um, and I believe she was living in her authentic area in her right. zone, right. but she literally was just disagreeing with what some of the thought leadership was. Mm -hmm. And she has had literally by herself select to work with her. Right. And, and she created her own lane. So she, yes, Jenna, go ahead. <laughs> yes. I love it. Speaking of marketing, so one of the things that we do with our clients is positioning training. Mm -hmm. And a part of positioning training is really um, diving deep into what your messaging strategy will be and, mm -hmm. and how who you are in the marketplace and who you're not right. in the marketplace, right? And, and I'm going to mess this up, but I believe it's Tim Williams who says that, you know, strategy, strategy is deciding what you're not going to do. And when we go through positioning strategy, one of the questions we ask our clients is, what pisses you off about what you see in the industry? Mm. Like what is said in your industry that you disagree with and goes against you know, what you believe? And to your point, I think that's a great way to use LinkedIn as a marketing tool is to amplify your thoughts mm -hmm. and, I, and your clients will self-select based off of your beliefs. Right, because every client is not your client. So you want the clients that really are either out ahead Mm -hmm. Because they see that you are you think in a different way, mm -hmm. or you want the clients that are right in line with you. Because everyone has a unique perspective. If your perspective is traditional, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But make sure that you are using your voice on the platform, right? And showing up authentically. Yes. yes, that's that word, right? So when I think about where I started with LinkedIn, I started using LinkedIn after I left corporate America. So I was not someone who was on the platform really when I was still in my sales career. And at that time in my life, I was just fed up with living out of alignment with who I was authentically. And I didn't think it was a good business strategy per se. I just felt like I need to show up in alignment with who I really am. I was just on this journey of self-discovery. And some of the choices I made as far as publishing content and my focus, I thought, mm, this kind of might be career suicide, but I just 
you know, I'm at a point where I just, I'm gonna put it all out there. And it was shocking for me that all of the things that for me were forms of rebellion for who I was in corporate were the very things that attracted my buyers to me. And then before I knew it, people were recognizing me as a LinkedIn expert. And I was like, is that what, is this what expertise is? You know, so when I think about where I started, it started with wanting to serve the market and wanting to be able to be true to myself. Right. And so let's continue this conversation more because I think LinkedIn is very intimidating for people. So in the next video, let's dive deeper into how to do B2B marketing on LinkedIn. Click that video now and we'll see you there.